I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, we are on the FM9, and I want to show you how I would put together a live layout on my FM9 to use with my main live preset when I'm performing. To get started, I've got a PRS DGT plugged straight into the FM9. That is going straight into Pro Tools, where you are hearing the raw sound with no post-processing. And I'll give you a very quick overview of the preset that I've got here, which Looks kind of daunting. I've broken down my main Ragdoll Live preset before. Essentially, it is using the USA Lead mid gain for all the tones together with my go-to LT TV Mix 7 cab. I've got a gate in here. I've got a parametric EQ set up for live performance. I've got a multi-band compressor just to kind of tame a little bit of low end when I'm kind of chugging away. I've got videos about all of this on its own. I have some reverb, some stereo pitch detune, some delays, some time delays, basically one for lead, one for a rhythmic delay over here. I'll let you hear some of these in a second. I've got a filter for a lo-fi style effect on one scene. I've got a chorus which is kicked in across two scenes. And then up the front, I've got a flanger set up for like a Van Halen style flange. I've got a wah. And I've got this parametric EQ block, which I can use to kind of compensate for the differences between humbucker and single coil guitars. Across the top, this is my clean sound. Again, another parametric EQ doing some tone shaping into our kind of Rockman trick that I talked about on last week's video. So I have four main sounds and two auxiliary sounds in here. The main sound is this kind of chunky sound. <laughs> the five dirty sounds. That lo-fi scene is something I would consider an auxiliary sound on there because I use it for basically maybe one part of one song during a gig, maybe for an intro. On scene eight, I'm using this top row along with a different channel on the chorus for my kind of clean sound. Very, very pristine 80s style clean. <laughs> straightforward really even though there are a lot of blocks in there now you'll notice that i wasn't using the flanger across any of those i like that as an every now and then effect that i can kick in when i feel like it same with the wah i use the wah for specific parts and then this parametric eq here i'd only engage if i say have to use a single coil guitar or something like that same thing with the pitch detune here i don't need this every single time I play. I only use it when I play in stereo. So the pitch and this parametric up the front have the scene ignore function engaged. That's very important to take note of. That means that when I kick them in, they will stay engaged across all the scenes. So I see them as kind of corrective performance controls on there. Everything else is fairly straightforward. If you've ever watched any of my Tuesday Tone Tip series, I've covered all of the different things that I do here. The only other thing to take note of is in the app block, the preamp section, I've got a control switch activating the preamp boost and the fat switch at the same time for my lead sound. So with that in mind, let's lay all of this out on the FM9 so that I can use it in a live context. I've got a blank layout here that I've set up. I'm just using layout number eight. I've already named it live. So I basically need those four main scenes and then I want two extra scenes sometimes, and maybe some fun stuff to do with different effects and different control switches. We need that pitch block, that parametric EQ. That flanger was an interesting case. I might want to set up a control switch and have that engage momentarily. And then I wouldn't mind having the option to turn my fat boost on any single scene. So let's lay this out for the very 
first button on here, I'm just gonna set that to scene number one. Very, very straightforward. I'll go with the default color on here as well. Uh, nothing too fancy on here, although I do like having the second press equals previous scene function engaged for all of these. So I can swap back between two scenes and press the same button. Now, on the hold function for this one, I'm gonna put that lo-fi scene, scene five. So let's assign that in here. We'll go scene and I'll set it to select scene number five over here. I don't need to worry about the second press with a hold function. The way this works is when I hold down the switch and the way I've got my FM9 set up is that it's set to activate when released. So I can anticipate that part of the song coming up and hold the foot switch down. When I release it, it will activate that lo-fi scene and then I can tap it again to go back to my main chunky sound. For the second button, I'm just gonna go with scene two, my lead scene over here, and I'm not going to assign a hold function on there. I'll just leave that as it is because I don't wanna accidentally engage anything when I go to play a lead. I just want the lead scene. We'll put our third scene over here. That was the delay scene that you heard earlier. And we'll put our kind of wobbly chorus scene over here on the fourth button. Very straightforward, just buttons one to four, scene one to four. Now this wobble scene, I don't use that often during a gig. So I'm gonna make a secondary function for that one, something that I use even less, and that is the clean scene, which I actually had assigned to scene eight over here. So I could, if I wanted to, say, copy my lead scene to scene six and my delay scene to scene seven and have them as hold functions. Personally, don't need them for this particular patch. I'm gonna keep things very, very simple. All right, now, having tempo sync delays and having a tuner is something I always like. So let's make this foot switch over here set up to be a utility. We'll have it as the tap tempo. And again, we'll have a hold function, another utility over here. This is gonna be the tuner. So I can use it to tap the tempo in. If I hold it, I can tune my guitar, which is very important during a show. All right, let's put the pitch block up here because I like having the option of being able to engage or disengage that across all scenes, depending on the gig that I'm doing, if I'm running in mono or stereo. And we don't need a scene, we need an effect here. So I'm gonna select pitch as my effect, which is down here, just off screen. Now this one's gonna be a pretty straightforward engage or bypass. If I wanted to, I could give it a custom name as well. I could call it grease or something like that, just because I like the way that sounds across all the scenes. When I'm playing in stereo, you know, sometimes it is that tiny bit too much depending on the gig, but I like having the option in there. So I can engage and disengage that with one of these out of the way foot switches. The parametric EQ, again, another corrective performance control. Let's put that up here in the top left. So it's PEQ3, we'll go effect. I'm gonna select PEQ3 from the drop down, And this one, I am going to give a custom name. I'll just call it like pickup compensator or I'll call it fatten or something like that, not to be confused with the fat switch in the amp. So just call it fatten, that will fatten up a clean sound. Basically, let's actually hear what that does because I can tap the coils on this guitar. So I'll go to my main chunky scene over here. This is the parametric EQ that I'm talking about. I'll let you hear one of the single coil modes on this guitar. We'll have a listen to how this fattens things up. <laughs> Doesn't sound exactly like a humbucker, but does take out some of that kind of shrill twang that especially you'd get on say a Strat or a Telecaster. So I like having that one in there and I like having it assigned to that switch. Again, if I changed guitars mid gig, I would press that button once. I wouldn't have to touch it again. I can use my main controls along the bottom row. For the middle one, let's assign that control switch that does the preamp boost and fat switch in there. So we'll go with control switch. It was control switch number one. And I wanna set it up as a latching control switch again, so that when I turn it on, it stays on. Let's call this one just boost, even though it is activating the fat switch as well. I could call it fat boost, but I've already used something called fatten. So we've got boost over there. Now in my particular scene right here, you'll see this when I kick this foot switch in. So it's the middle foot switch across the top. Let's have a listen.
very, very nice indeed. So this top row I've set up as the every now and then row. Now I've got a spare switch here. This is where I'm gonna put the momentary control switch for the flanger. So we'll go category, control switch. I have selected control switch number four in here. And what I've done, if we go to the flanger block. So the bypass state, well, I actually haven't assigned it yet, so I do need to do that. So I've gone with control switch four. I like my first three control switches to be latching and my last three to be momentary. That's just me and how I arrange things. So we'll set it up to be control switch number four. I like flipping the parameter range here so that when the control switch is at its maximum, it is engaged, meaning when it's on, the effect is on. So I press on it, I hold it down and it engages the flanger. So nothing happening at the moment. Let's go to FC edit. We've got our momentary switch in here. I'll give it a custom name. I'm going to just call it, I'm not going to call it flanger. I'm going to call it EVH because these are set up for the kind of Eddie Van Halen flange settings on there. And, you know, looking down at it and seeing Eddie's name is a big inspiration for me. I like that. And it just kind of adds to the overall vibe. So I can do this with that switch if I just press it and hold it. One thing I might do is just change the color of this switch to differentiate it from the boost over here. Let's go with a purple for the flanger. I don't know why I just associate flanges as kind of being purple. And for the fatten switch up here, I'll just use a different color over there. Let's go for this lovely teal. Now I've got this one layout that is gonna give me access to my different scenes, my control switches, my kind of bonus auxiliary performance controls and tap tempo and the tuner. Not only do I have an entire live rig with so many options in the box, I've now got a very flexible and powerful switching scheme to do that. So I will put this preset up on Axchange and I will put this layout up on my Discord server and link to that one there if you're interested in trying out not only the preset but the layout. If you've got any other questions, let me know. And if you've got specific layout preferences that you like, let me know about them in the comments section below. How do you lay out your FM9 or your FM3 and FC6 or your FC6 on its own, or of course your FC12 with whatever unit you are using? I really think the way FC edit is laid out and the way you can use layouts and not only customize them, but save up to eight of them for different gigs and different kind of workflows. They actually make me do different things when I'm playing. When I'm playing live, I want this direct access thing. If I'm noodling at home, I want to use multiple layouts. So I will use the effects layouts together. I actually like the factory ones quite a lot. Anyway, that is how I go about building a live layout for my live preset. Check the video description for more info. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. I'll play you all out with some loud lead guitar. Cheers. Hey.